Hello everyone, good evening. I'm Shreya Dhondial. You're watching Beyond the Headlines. Let's start first with the big, big stories of the day. Year-end woes for Delhi, air quality dips to the severe category, curbs on construction kick in. A near-fatal accident lands cricketer Rishabh Pant in hospital. He was on his way to Dehradun to surprise his family when he dozed off on the wheel of his Mercedes. Chief Justice of India, D.Y. Chanjatur, says it again. Bail, not jail, he says, is the rule. Laments lower courts are afraid of granting bail. Prime Minister Modi's mother, Hiraba, passes away at the age of 100. He gets back to work after her last rites, launching multiple infra projects in Kolkata via video link. Pot shots over potholes. Karnataka Congress highlights a road cave in in Lucknow near Chief Minister Yogi's house. Says this is the Vikas model the BJP has thrust on Karnataka. Russian President Putin and Chinese President Xi Jinping hold virtual meetings against the backdrop of a difficult international situation. Both nations agree to increase bilateral trade cooperation. And breathtaking scenes as fresh spell of snow envelops parts of Jammu and Kashmir and Himachal Pradesh. Patni Top, Srinagar, Shimla, all covered in a thick blanket of snow. India has been debating the idea of theatre commands for quite some time now. Countries like America and China already use this system. And according to many military experts, it is the future of modern warfare. India too has begun planning for theatrization. In fact, the planning has been on for the last three years at least. The first step in that direction came in 2020 when the late General Bipin Rawat was appointed India's first CDS. That's the Chief of Defence Staff. His primary mission was to push India towards theatrization, towards greater interoperability between the three services, that's the Army, the Navy and the Air Force. But General Rawat's untimely death in 2021 has complicated matters. Looks like the next uh, core of military leaders are split on how to implement the theatrization plans. They agree that it's needed, but they differ on how it must be done. Some of those differences were on display today. The current army chief, General Manoj Pandey, and his predecessor, General Narabne, were speaking at the K.V. Krishna Rao Memorial Lecture here in Delhi. General Narabne raised questions about the current theatrization process. He says, India first needs a comprehensive national security strategy and a comprehensive national defense strategy. Only then should theater commands be set up so that everyone knows what the larger national aim is. He says theatrization without a national security strategy is like putting the cart before the horse. Listen in. Theater commands are there to win wars. And this Malayan campaign has all the ingredients of a pot boiler. National security strategy, higher defense organization, inter-service strategies and inter-service rivalries, all it is all there. And therefore, a study of this campaign, I think, will help us draw a lot of relevant deductions. Competing strategies, where this campaign gets very interesting in the context of theatrization. Like I said, General Narabne's successor was also speaking at the same lecture. General Pardee reaffirmed the Army's commitment to theatrization. He says the service chiefs are looking at the best way to create integrated theatre commands. Now, I know you have a lot of questions right now, so let me start with what is a theatre command? Simply put, it refers to the pooling of resources by all three services under a senior command. Right now, India's three services 
have a different chain of command and different leadership. The Army Chief, the Navy Chief, the Air Chief. That will still continue when theatre commands come in. But theatrization would bring all of it under a single command in each theatre. And how do you create these theatres? Well, based on your country's security requirements. You can have geographic commands, mission-based commands or maritime commands. These theatres will be headed by a three-star officer, either from the Army or the Navy or the Air Force. This officer will be in charge of all the resources in that theatre. And how does that help our defence forces? By improving interoperability, by ensuring that all three services not operate in a silos, by improving synergy between all three service forces. Having said that, the plan does have certain drawbacks. One, the shortage of resources within the Indian Air Force. The Indian Air Force says it simply does not have enough assets to spread around multiple theatre commands. Number two is the possible power play between the three forces. Many experts have admitted that an integrated command structure will inevitably be dominated by the Indian Army. Take the two Chiefs of Defence Staff for instance that India has had in the last three years. Both of them have come from the Indian Army. Of course, fact is that the Indian Army is the largest amongst the three services and by a large extent. Also, while we talk about theatrization in India, we must also look at similar plans that have been drawn up by other countries, especially our problematic neighbour to the east. China began theatrization in 2016. The PLA officially abandoned its decades-old seven military regions, replacing them with five theatre commands in charge of territorial defence of the north, south, east, west and central regions. The new system integrated command of various forces, including the ground, naval and air forces. The most relevant to India is the Western Theatre Command. It covers the largest geographical area overseeing the Xinjiang and the Tibet Autonomous Regions, as well as the border with India. This is responsible for all conventional military missions and operations in this region, as in in charge of all non-nuclear operations in this area as well. But what is the debate as far as theatre commands are concerned? And uh, three years after the Prime Minister first announced it on the 15th of August, why have theatre commands still not materialised? General B.P. Malik is a former Chief of Army Staff. He's joining us on the broadcast. And Air Vice Marshal Manmohan Bahadur is joining us as well on the broadcast to get us the Indian Air Force's point of view. General Malik, uh, I want to understand from you what you make of what we have heard yesterday from a former chief and a serving chief. We understand that General Naravne is not saying don't get theatre commands in. He's simply saying don't jump the gun. First, at least define what your national security doctrine is and keeping that in mind, come up with the reorganization of your military. Do you agree with him, sir? Uh, good evening, Shreya. Thank you for getting me on your show, on your new channel. Uh, you have given a very good background of the whole uh, issue. And General Naramne, in addition to saying that there is a need for a national security strategy, national defense strategy, he also mentioned that there is a need for us to have a higher defense organization in place, which should have civil and military fusion. And it should include reps, not only from the military, but from concern uh, ministry, so that we can adopt a whole of the nation approach. I think that's also an important point. Now, what General Naramne has suggested is a sequential approach. I think it is a correct approach, sequential approach, which involves resolving issues which uh, of national security strategy and national defense uh, strategy which have not been accepted or articulated by the government for decades. Uh, uh, people have been talking about it, but it has not been announced. Now, what has happened is that the mandate given to General Rawat when he was CDS, and it continues today with the new CDS also, it says facilitation of restructuring of military commands for optimal utilization of resources by bringing about jointness in operations, including through establishment of joint or integrated theater commands. This mandate does not talk of the higher strategy, 
at the national level or the defense strategy or the higher defense control organization, which has now been mentioned by General Naramne. So General Naramne's approach is a sequential approach, uh, which will obviously take much longer. It will be, uh, and if the government accepts whatever he is saying, it will take much longer. The other approach hmm. is at the lower level, it's, it involves only the military. And uh, there is no mention of the national security strategy or NDS or high defense uh, organization. And it doesn't touch its policy making okay. setup or and keep the military away. You know, even Naresh Chandra had pointed out that military chiefs are excluded from the apex hmm. high defense structure. And they are only associated with the uh, totally. formulation process. So there is a difference in approach. These present approach given to the uh, uh, to the CDS is the one which doesn't talk about the higher defense organization or the national security strategy. Although I must also Sorry. here mention that all the three services, it's not only the army, all the three services would like to have integrated defense, uh, integrated center command. But the approach is slightly different oh. and the manner in which it is to be resolved. Uh, that I'm difference. not sure that... General Malik, I'm not sure the Indian Air Force wants it. Uh, they have been saying as much, as clearly as they can. Vice Marshal Manmohan Badur, then have we been going about theatre commands all wrong? Uh, thank you, Shreya, for getting me in and uh, good evening, sir. Uh, it's like this, uh, that uh, the Air Force chiefs have gone on record to say, uh, certainly the last two chiefs I know, uh, who have said that the, the Air Force is not against theatre or jointness through combined commands. The issue is, how are you going to implement it? And uh, as General Naravne said yesterday and uh, General Malik is saying now, you know, you cannot start from bottoms up. There has to be a direction that is given from the top by the national political uh, leadership that, listen, these are our aims. These are India's aims. These are India's objectives. This is what we feel is dear to us. These are uh, priorities for the nation. And when this is spelled out, it is, when you talk of the national security strategy, it's not just the defense ministry or the defense forces that, is being, that are being addressed. Mm -hmm. It is the complete government, all the ministries are being addressed. So when the government lays out this, then mm -hmm. the uh, policies of associated ministries also have to be dovetailed. Uh, I'll just give you an example. For example, okay. the Chinese defense policy. Uh, what it says is that we have to guard our security interests in cyberspace, in electromagnetic spectrum, maritime, etc., etc. So when you have this such a clear-cut um, overall objective given mm -hmm. by the government, then flows the next one. How will the armed forces, sure. the three services, uh, meet uh, hmm. the national security strategy, the objectives of that? So we cannot start, uh, as General Ravna said, put the card before the horse, by starting from bottoms. Give us direction from the top. Uh, the only thing that the chiefs had to go by, and General Malik would uh, bear that out, is the RMs, the Raksha Mantris, of directly. And that also, the last one issued out, I think, is 2009. Okay. And we are in 2022. Uh, you know, this is, yeah. these are some things which, uh, which is not rocket science. This, these are things which are streamlined, followed by all advanced countries. Uh, and if we think that we okay. are a part of reckoning, then we must uh, understand that when you consider yourself a part of reckoning, then you have, there are certain procedures that you have to work out so that your countrymen know what okay. we are going to okay. do. And others also know that this is what India stands for. So the NSS has to be first, the national security strategy, oh, so, the national defense strategy. And, 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 and therefore, therefore it is stunning. 
Sorry? And therefore, it is stunning that uh, there has been criticism. I'm saying there has been criticism over the last three years about the way that we are going about theater commands, especially from the Air Force and the Navy. And yet the view was that it has to be pushed. Uh, under the new CDS, will the approach change is the question. But General VP Malik, I have uh, exactly 40 seconds on the show, but I want to ask you then, pretty stunning for a country like India, to not have a national security strategy or a national defense strategy in place. 2018, uh, there was a high-level committee formed under the NSA. They were supposed to come up it, with it. We are entering 2023 now. And we've seen a major conflict with China in the meantime. And yet, we don't have a national, a document that tells us what exactly our overall approach, national approach is to our national security. Shri, I'll make two quick points. Firstly, the approach today mm. given to the military or to the CDS is more on unified military strategy, joint planning and joint manship. It doesn't talk about the national security strategy or defense strategy. And secondly, this approach is to make the present military commands structures more economical, the emphasis on money. But there are many issues which will come up, which are coming up, and that is why this delay. I totally agree with General Naravne that it is better to have a, a holistic approach starting from the top because then all the issues that will get mm. in, that are involved in the theaterization, many of them will get sorted out straight away. If the services do not have the okay. idea of how the government thinks of what are the threats, what are the challenges, if they do not have that straight from the horse's mouth, it will be very difficult for us to continue and make these theater commands yeah. uh, in the manner in which they are. So for me, I would say that national security strategy is a must. It must be given. But I also want to say that okay. this whole exercise has to be done under political leadership. It cannot be left to the military. And only then mm. we will succeed like the other countries. Absolutely. Of the military. And that, therefore, a knowledgeable, uh, a, a, an old, political uh, leader who knows all these things, he should be made to lead a committee which will go sure. into all these issues. And then it will be easier for us to have a, a theater command, integrated theater command of the type that we want. Okay. Let's see when it comes. Uh, it seems it's been pushed to the back burner, but let's see when it comes. We'll leave it there for the moment, gentlemen. Thank you very much, General VP Malik. Thank you for joining us. And Air Vice Marshal Manmohan Badur, thank you very much for putting the Air Force's point of view. And gentlemen, have a very good New Year. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank, thank you, you, sir. And wish you all the best in the New Year, too. Thank you, sir. And to you, sir.